Hi everyone, it's uh, Jason at the Centre for Computing History and today uh, we are very lucky to have internet sensation <laughs> Tom Scott uh, with us um, and uh, we're going to have a little chat about the BBC Micro because I believe Tom, this has a little bit of good memories for you. Yeah, it's, it's a weird bit of nostalgia this for me because I was almost too late for this. Right. My, my primary school had these right. and then by the time I got to past sort of year five, year six, They've been phased out in in favour of oh whatever the manufacturer of PCs was it research it's good. research research machines yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it yeah. was it was in favour of those so the, right. I was sort of the last generation to have these right so it's a weird sort of nostalgia because I sort of remember bits of it uh -huh. but how much of this will be completely lost to me I have no idea <laughs> but there is there is one thing I know that I remember right. which is turning it on it makes this noise that. That, that noise. That I definitely remember. Nostalgic <laughs> for millions of people across the country. Just two yep. beeps. It's like yep. the, the uh, music from Jaws. <laughs> <laughs> it only takes two notes. Although, what's, what's this here then? Because I don't recognise like floppy disks and multiple track things. Oh uh, yeah, so, um, so yeah, the, these were, they, they were, well, they were called lots of things, um, but disk drive bridges was one of them. Uh, so this was just a convenient way of having two disk drives connected to your BBC Micro in a nice convenient shelf that your monitor can sit on. Um, and they were made by various people, Kumana and Watford Electronics, Actor and various, all these uh, other companies. Um, but yeah, it was just a, a nice tidy way of having your BBC. Oh, okay. Now, normally your beam would sit underneath there a little bit more yeah um, but we've got it dragged out a little bit so the camera can see our screen um, and a mouse and a mouse now, this is revolutionary for a bbc mic so you never had a, a mouse no we beat? never had a mouse it's keyboard only oh, keyboard no. or concept keyboard oh yeah concept yeah. key with sort of big pressure pad with lots of buttons and an that's overlay. it they, they were incredibly popular in schools yeah. um because they allowed you to create a template and write a program and you touch different parts of things. So it wasn't about letters and things, it was yeah. graphics and, and pictures you could draw on there and you can make them yourself. So they, they were really popular in schools. But no, we've got a standard, or well, fairly standard BBC setup today with disk drives, but we do have the mouse attached, which is a little bit more unusual. And we've got a program that comes on uh, an EEPROM. So with the BBC Micro, you had some uh, sockets inside, just above the keyboard, where you could plug in a, a ROM chip or an EEPROM. Um, and they stored the programs. And when you typed in your command, it just happened like that. Right. Um, no floppy disks waiting to load, certainly no cassettes waiting to load. So to oh, wow. do okay. this... Yeah, um, that, was, that was luxury. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely it was. So the, the classics were WordWise, which is a word processor. That came on ROM. Um, View, which is another version of the word processor. Um, there were graphics packages, which we're going to try one today. Um, Watford Electronics did their one as well. So there, there were a number of different... Well, actually, there were hundreds of ROMs. If you look in our... Uh, archive on the website, there, there's loads of them. Um, but we're going to try one today, um, which will be a little bit of fun, um, and it's called Super Art. All right. So, well, um, what do I to type? get this to work, we have to do all the magic things. So, first we have to start uh, type in star pointer on. Oh! Oh, I haven't touched a keyboard like that in a long time. Even, the, even the sounds and the. It's, it, it's both the sound and the sort of kinesthetic, slightly weird soft spongy it's not it's spongy up to a point and then it hits like this rock solid end of thing so start pointer on do you say star pointer on star or start star so this the star oh. the the character star <laughs> due type oh, yeah, right let's, okay let's, yeah my bad I, I don't talk proper do i so the uh, the star character star yep pointer, pointer on on okay okay there's another command yet but i'll just fill you in on the keyboard the bbc micro keyboards were brilliant they were designed for little kids like you to yes. hammer to death. Yeah, like uh, I, you can you can hit that, you can do anything with it. it. You can probably spill stuff on it, and it'll be fine. Yeah, well, I'm not sure you can go that far, <laughs> but, but but yeah, they they take a hammering. Yeah. Now the thing is with these a lot of keyboards, the action of the keyboard um, pressing down the key um, presses on a pad that then joins together, making a circuit. Yeah. Pressing the key. Little, little so or yeah, so the key presses down on it. Yeah. These are different. Um, what they have is they have um, two spring bits like that. And when the key is up, the, the plastic material holds them apart. And when you press down on it, it lets them close. Right. So it's a little bit of a difference. So basically, however hard you press down on it, it doesn't damage that little spring leaf That's um, clever. switch. So a really, really good design um, that not a lot of people know that. <laughs> um, but um, that's a plus one for, uh, for Acorn with their keyboards. Anyway, next command is star art. Star a -R -T I don't need to hold down shift because caps lock is on. Art. Oh, okay. Oh, this is... 
I didn't know the micro could do stuff like this. Ah, uh, yeah, you see? Now, th there's a slight bug at the minute. Okay. So this isn't going to work because <laughs> for some reasons, I don't know why, um, you have to press break and it will restart itself and now you okay, get the cursor on the screen. Got, now we're right. good. Don't know why it does that. It doesn't do it on other babies, but this one does. But there you go. Huh. Right. It feels odd to be using an, a uh, an acorn mouse pad and a, a, and a mouse. You're with... living in the future. Yeah. You know, not many people had those, not, not at that point, uh, in schools with their, uh, their beebs. And there's no mouse acceleration on it. Oh, no, no. What you, how nope. you move is... That how you move there you is going straight to there. Directly translated across, yeah. Yep. It doesn't matter how fast... How fast it, oh, and that... You need to clean this mouse I think, uh, I'm not sure. I think you just might be going too fast for it. So, oh, yeah. Because the BBC could only poll the mouse so many times a second. So if it goes all the way round... So if you go too far, it just misses it. <laughs> OK. <laughs> but hey, you know, it was 1982 or something. Yeah. All right. Good work. <laughs> so, so, you, so you never had anything like this in, in no, your No, this, this is... It's weird to see this for me, because for me, the, the it, it basically looked like teletext all the oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we'll see that in another programme we run. All right. right. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a bad drawing package, yeah. actually. Um, it looks quite similar to things like um, Apple's sort of paint programme and, yeah. and uh, that. I'm sure they didn't steal anything. Now, if I, if I break out of this... Mm -hmm. Just clears again. Just clears again. So you actually have to do file exit or something to... To get out of this, you'd need to press control and break, which is All a right. hard break. There's a file menu. Mm. I, I, yeah, this, this feels much too late. Well, it's, the thing is, I mean, by, by the... So 1981, the BBC Micro came out. So the, the, mouse, uh, or the mouse didn't um, appear on the BBC Micro probably for a couple of years or so. Yeah. But by that time, you know, we had the Apple Macintosh that was doing big business... Yeah. Um, you know, getting out there on desktops and people were trying to copy some of the ways those things worked and obviously early versions of Windows in the same way. Yeah. Um, so the things you see here in the, in the way that the, the GUI works is sort of directly translated from those other systems. Yep. That still works. Demonstrating some programming skills. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> so, um, but you did have to, like, you had to type in line numbers for each one. Yes. Yeah. How do, how do you get this code listing back? Is it list? Just list. list. Yeah. Um, but you press oh, I've just, but you press I, break. But I hard so what you can it, yeah. do, you can press. Oh, did you do control break? I think I control break? broke. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, it, never mind. You can type old and get your program back after a, right. uh, a reset. Um, but yeah, I mean they were great yeah. for programming. Um, it's where I learned to program, um, and and loads of people cut their teeth programming BBC Micros. Yeah. Um, the line numbers um, were basically so that you could tell the system what order to execute the, the lines of code. Yeah. Basically, because most people didn't have the mouse and didn't have any way of GUI changing yeah. positions you could put of lines. In a different position, and then there was a reline command or something like you that. Could yeah, yeah. Renumber, that you it. could renumber. Yeah, renumber that. You could renumber your program, and it would put ten between each one. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the line numbers are basically saying, you know, if you want a line in between ten and twenty, stick one in at fifteen. Yeah. But it wouldn't. What confuses kids when they're here is that that it doesn't actually put it between them. It just lists yeah. so, 10, 20, and then you're fifteen. Yeah. Only when you list does it reshow it. Um, so slightly confusing, but once you get the idea of you know yeah. the way that works, it's quite straightforward. All so, right. So what else have we got? Well, here? we've got There's... a couple of games over the the, uh, the side there. So um, pod, pod. Yeah, we could, which, whichever one takes your fancy. We've got That's... Granny's Garden over there. We've got Pod. Right, I think I've only I think I only know about Granny's Garden because of other people telling me about it. Yeah. yeah. To uh, to me, that doesn't. I don't think that has any nostalgia in it. Right. Right. What else, what else have we got here? <laughs> Humberside County Council Microelectronics and Education Centre. <laughs> All right. Dread so, Dragon Dread Droom. Dragon Droom. Yeah. So this is a, these are these are all education, and then we've got a straight out game um, there, Stank Strikers Run. run. Um, so you know, take your pick. So the, but, uh, I'll tell you the only problem I can remember. I have no idea what it is. It's something that would let you create a fake newspaper. It would let you take a headline, a title, and it would print it out like it looked like something out of it, like. It, a, a, newspaper. A, a fake newspaper? How dare you? You could create <laughs> real newspapers on that. It's, that sounds like um, a program called Stop Press. Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and yeah, you could. You could do very, very basic um, uh, sort of desktop publishing. Um, yeah. But they, but they were simple. Uh, yeah. Obviously, the limitations of the machine uh, right. kicked in. Let's, let's have a look at Granny's Garden then, because I'm, I'm going to try and see if I remember this or if it's... Yeah. Or, or whether you remember everybody else's memories boot, of it. To you've... boot disk, hold yep. shift, press break, drive one. No, uh, no the drive, other, the other drive. Dri yep. Z drive zero. Sorry. Yep. Drive zero. So it numbers the drive zero, one, two, and three. All right. Okay. 
Uh, shift brake? And shift and brake, yeah. Good noise. All right. So. Part oh. one. Uh -huh. See, I, I, my family had an old Amstrad, so I recognise that noise in kind of a different context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On this one, it's quite a um, uh, dull uh, yeah. clicking of the, the head. It's quite a nice, quiet drive. Oh, yes. Um, so, yeah, yeah, why, I think. Now, to be honest, I'm pretty much... Oh. <laughs> Someone had a little too much fun putting that in. It's, there, is, there isn't going to be a skip because it's busy sending no, that, instructions I, I was going to the... say, quite a lot of the time you had yeah. to go through these intro sequences. So, so um, uh, Granny's Garden was an educational package and it was trying to teach kids various different things throughout, but it's an adventure game. Um, now, Mm. Immediately, because I'm a grown-up, I think I'll type in B2, because you go X-axis, then Y-axis. But as a kid, if you type in 2B, what happens? Let's find out. Please put the letter first. Ah, see, there's no, yeah. there's no flies on this. Yeah, there's not. <laughs> like, from a user interface perspective, not great. <laughs> that You find that a lot. We were playing with some of the other educational games, and unless you've read the manual and know how to work yeah. it, you don't stand a chance. So this is, this is not so much educational as it is just randomly typing in things yeah i mean for this what they're trying to do is obviously do this whole kind of coordinates the rows and the column thing and teach kids how that works um you're doing it randomly i'm not i'm, going, not? I'm going oh i, I thought I, you started oh here we go i started there and, and moved down oh my word although it, i i have <laughs> that's really unpleasant it is it it also like there's so many things you could have done there like told the kid they were close or told them which direction to go in it's just mm -hmm. like no not that one mate not that one not that one well there you know you've got to remember there's 32k of memory that oh that's what? something i remember i'm not sure it's from granny's garden i think that's from an old concept keyboard game that did the same thing mm. that's hit some weird memory in my head <laughs> of having to remember passwords to skip forward yeah. to a part of the game because yeah. there was no save files yeah yeah, uh, now that, that was fairly common in sort of arcade games and all sorts of different games is that they password protected the different sections. Um, yes. Yes, I do. Do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I'm going to see what happens if I lie. I was going to say, I don't. <laughs> I'm not pressing delete, I'm pressing return. All right. I can't even see it. Are you sure you have a password? <laughs> no. Be honest. Come on, own up. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> there is something quite sinister about this whole mm -hmm. game, to be honest. Even the cover. I yeah. mean, oh, this is the kind of thing where where some kids are going to be absolutely terrified for no reason. <laughs> okay, so if you if you lie about having a password, you have to listen to the music again. Fine. <laughs> Can you see a cave? Well. I can see yes. some blue blocks. Do you want to go in the cave? No, not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, you do. Fine. Okay, <laughs> right. So, so Why did you bother asking? So this is the classic Granny's Garden. It is completely on rails. It takes you where it wants to take you. Um, and there is no way no. out No. <laughs> That's not very nice. <laughs> no, it just won't let, you, won't let you enter seriously. No, it's just... No, you've got the, yeah, yes or no. <laughs> I'm trying to put an exclamation mark in. I was trying to find the, do I, do I have, I mean, it's pretty great. You have to. It's, now look oh, at that. that's, that's, that's some incredible animation. artwork there. That is some animation. All right, so, <laughs> it, it, I mean, it's easy to mock, particularly looking back at, at this. Like, there are many decisions that you could make with this that would make it more entertaining from today's perspective. Oh, yeah. But as a kid, you got to use the class computer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. And actually, you did want to do this stuff. When it said, do you want to do it? Nobody ever thought no. No. Um, you know, of course I want to go and do this. Okay. Yeah, every, every single question is just, like, yeah. why? Because otherwise, it's a story. Because the kid thinks they have some agency. Mm. Yeah. And, and you've got to remember, you know, you've got 32 kilobytes of memory. This is all stored in. Yeah. So there are only so many options you can possibly store. But this is all about taking them through the story that they want to tell you. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, the very limited options. Yeah. But it's, it's, it is I quite well known. <laughs> you have a stick? I have a stick. Uh, oh, no. where, do you, where do you wish to go? Home. 
Right, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, it's, it's lovely, but it's just not... Like, I've talked about the Amstrad here before. Yeah, yeah. And like that, yeah, immediate nostalgia, obviously. This is more like... It's locked up somewhere in there, but I genuinely think I was too young for a lot of this. It's, but it's the fact that this survived, that so many of these survived, and survived school kids whacking on this keyboard yeah. and hitting everything as fast as they could like <laughs> god it's like uh, at some point the the naughty kid in the class will have just smashed oh yeah that almost with their fist yeah. and yeah. yeah it's quite funny when you look at the design of the, the bbc micro um you haven't got it on yours so just to the left of your keyboard mm. you've got that little thing yeah, on this little... on this one here it's just a it literally is a punch out um thing in the thing so you can press that if i press on it hard enough it will push out and that's where a rom socket would go um oh now you've done it I, sa I said yes instead of no. Uh, <laughs> that time, I said yes. You know, the kids have been trained to go along and say yes to everything. Is that meant to be laughter? Well, no, I think it's supposed to be more scary than... It's not laughter. Um, but, yeah, I see where you're going. You're, you're teaching kids just to say yes to everything. <laughs> and, then, and then it's like, do you want to do this? <laughs> well, I might as well say yes. I know I've got no option. Well, that is actually a, probably a life message there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that's not what they were going for, but, you know... <laughs> Maybe it works. <laughs> <laughs> there is one bit of software. I, I'll actually, there's one, one bit of software which I have tried to track down in the past mm. and can't. And it is the software they use to generate clocks for the BBC. So the trouble with clocks. So if you remember, like shows in the 90s, we're mm -hmm. talking like 90 to like 96 on, on the BBC used to use BBC Micros for their graphics. So if you had a 60 second countdown clock on something like Record Breakers, yeah. it would be this, this octagonal thing in the corner and a countdown timer in there genlocked to all the equipment. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's just output into a TV monitor. Yeah. They, can, they can do that. Mm -hmm. I've wanted to emulate that for ages. Right. But the trouble is, and I've, like, I've put this out on Twitter multiple times, I've tried to go to archives, no one the, the VT clock software is out there. Mm -hmm. The thing that generated the sort of countdown the first you know, 20 seconds of black before a program. Yeah, yeah. That exists. That's in there. Right. But the bit of software that generated the countdown clocks and built-in graphics, no one mm. that I can find has it. So if anyone does have that out there, like, I, I can't run it, but I want to emulate it. Right. I want to be able to get those graphics and use those. Yeah, And yeah, yeah. you can't trace an old VHS copy because it's not clean enough. Right. Um, well, like, I mean, uh, there's, there's probably ways and means, take a little bit of programming, I'm sure there's ways and means, and then if you then emulate it, you can then just cut out the corner and use it for the videos. I, the think, I think there's probably ways and means. That's However, the so there is a, there's a couple of things. Down. Like, it's a yeah. custom-built font. Like, yeah. someone designed all that. Oh, himself. really? Yeah, it's not just this oh, 60 just, here. I thought that would probably be a mode 70. No, it's, oh, all, okay. it's all custom oh, drawn, that's every bit, bit of it. Tricky. Yeah. There is, right. So, during this research, there is uh, one... Because uh, I, I looked up my research on this before coming here because I knew I was going to say this. <laughs> um, there is one episode of Noel's House Party right. where something fails. I think it's the grab a grand thing. Like, so that's, uh, I can't remember the name. He, he cheats on grab a grand. Right, okay. Uh, and the guy, like, he puts the, the uh, grab a grand, for those who don't know, it was the big uh, shower cubicle with blowers in the bottom. You chuck the money and you have to get, catch as much as you can. Yeah, that's it. Um, and whoever's in there cheats. And he cheats by just, as uh, the host puts the wadge of money through the letterbox into the thing, just, just, it, takes, just it. takes it. <laughs> uh, and the thing is, he's let them do that a couple of times before. Because I was looking through it, it's like, I remember this as a kid. I remember because TV presentations are sort of nerdy stuff I'm interested in. Uh. I remember going, oh, something went wrong there. So I, like, I tried to track this down. Like, he's let this happen a couple of times. Clearly at this point, the producers have gone, look, you can't, we, we can't, can't just hand over much. money. <laughs> we, can't, we can't do this. So this time, they stop it. They reset the system and everything else. But whoever's in the gallery going, ah, we've got to make this. For about three seconds, the menu for that bit of software right. pops up. And the how many seconds do you want? What do you want to do? It's like, that's a BBC Micro. That's, right, so okay. somewhere out there, that software probably still exists on a disk in some engineer's so, archive. So um, this place has just thousands of floppy disks and things that haven't been checked yet. I think we have the BBC Micro that was used on um, one of the kids' TV shows. Uh, or no, Micro Live. We have the, the BBC Micro, uh, BBC Master that was used on B Micro Live. We have another BBC Micro that doesn't look like a BBC Micro because it's been built into another case. And that was used by the BBC Engineering Department. Um, and that's got a bunch of discs with it that, Hello. sadly, we've never actually checked yet. 
Right, um, sir. <laughs> so we might have to, I, I doubt it. I think the, the engineering department was much more to do with antennas and all that malarkey. The thing is, though, with a lot of um, the, the BBC stuff, a lot of the overlay stuff was actually done with um, Archimedes computers uh, and RISC PCs, obviously a bit later on. Mm. Um, and if you look on our channel, there is a, another video uh, that we've done all about that because we have... Um, uh, the graphics from various kids' TV programs and things, um, and also from the National Lottery as well. Um, that was all done with Archimedes oh, machines right. and Genlot in the same way. Yeah. And we have Genlot boards for the, the BBC Micros, um, so you know it's not impossible that we couldn't get something going <laughs> again. Right. But there, there you go. Thank you very much. No, our pleasure. Glad uh, brought a little bit of nostalgia back for you. <laughs> Great to have you at the museum again. Well, um, thank you very much for letting me film. And um, uh, we've been two meters apart for all of this, by the way. That's why the camera angles are so weird. Um, yeah, not because of lockdown or anything. It's just the restraining order, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, no, we probably should have said that. Yeah, that the, the distance is here because it's all been done in uh, coronavirus lockdown mm -hmm. days. It's one of those things that we're getting through, and uh, yeah. we shall um, reopen again soon, hopefully. All right. But anyway, thanks for coming along. Thank you. And, and all uh, dramatically. There we go. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Cheers.